It's actually taken from the middle verse of the Bible. And I don't know exactly how they determined that, but that's what they tell me, that this text is actually from the middle, uh, actually Psalm 118, uh, and I'll begin reading in uh, verse 6. But in verse 8, it is the middle verse of the Bible. Psalm 118, verse 6, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Now think what that verse is saying. Consider all of the uh, verses of the Bible uh, it can be summed up in one thought. Trust in the Lord, not man. Verse 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put trust uh, in or put confidence in princes. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we ask for your blessings on us today. Uh, Lord, may we learn to trust you. May we determine that you will be first in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the songs we've sung, the worship, and uh, just the, I, I pray that we'd all just humble ourselves before you today. Speak to our hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm speaking this morning on the question of who can you really trust? Who can you really trust? Uh, Ronald Reagan made the phrase, trust but verify, famous in, uh, in 1987 when he signed a treaty with the Russian leader, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. It actually meant that uh, Reagan would trust the words of the treaty only if he could verify it. Now, this is illustrated by two little simple stories that I want to I share with you. First story is that of a man who went fishing with his little, his son. And the boy was all over the rocks like a little monkey when suddenly he yelled out to his dad, Catch me, Dad. He caught his dad off guard, and, and though he caught him, it knocked him to the ground. And his dad looked at him and says, Why did you do that? And the little boy says, Because I knew you would catch me. Uh, he could trust his dad, you know. Now, there's a second story that's got a little different twist to it, and I, I want you to listen to what it says. The other story is similar, but here you have the dad out on the, the grass and the, uh, the front lawn, and his little boy's on the front porch, and so he tells the little boy, he says, jump and I'll catch you. And so the little boy jumps, and then the dad steps back. And lets him fall to the ground. And the dad said, well, I just want to teach you that you can't always trust everything anybody says. Well, that's kind of a strange story, I, I, I admit. It, it really sounds cruel. But uh, it, is, it is a fact. You can't trust everybody, can you? Now, so as we look at this verse, which is the middle verse of the Bible... <laughs> It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. You know, throughout the scriptures, God is saying, trust me, trust me, trust me. And yet, man continues to trust in his own strength, doesn't he? Proverbs 3, 5, which we all hopefully know, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not into thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all thy, thy heart, and lean not into your own understanding. We, we do tend to lean on our own understanding, don't we? Probably the best advice you could give anybody as we approach 2019 is... Place your faith and trust in God. Trust God. Believe Him with all your heart. And if you take the, the word of man, 
man's going to fail you. It's just a, a fact of life, and most of us that have reached uh, any age at all uh, says, yep, that's true. Uh, I can't depend on man. Now, let's look at this text because I believe it explains why we should trust in the Lord, why it is better to trust in the Lord than to trust in man. And we're going to go on down into the chapter, and we're going to find out what's so special about the Lord. So let's, let's look first of all at verse 5 in our text. Uh, Psalm 118, verse 5. And uh, the psalmist says, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Now, he had learned through prayer. He had learned that uh, he could trust the Lord. Verse 7 says, verse 6 rather, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can, can man do unto me. Now, I, I wonder how many of us can say that. The Lord is on my side. And, of course, we're reminded of what Abraham Lincoln once asked is, you think the Lord is on our side? He said, I'm just more concerned about being on the Lord's side. But having said that, David had learned through experience that God was on his side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I, I love Psalm 116. Boy, you could preach a, a complete message from that psalm. Look, let's look at the first few verses there. I love the Lord. Why? Because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. He knew that he could call on God. He knew that he could trust in God. He knew that God was, going, was there for him. I wonder how real prayer is to you this morning. How real is it? I, I hope it's, it, is, it is the same as, as breathing that you know that God is there and you don't have to beg Him to come down from heaven. You don't have to plead for Him to come from afar. You know He is present. If, you, if you're saved and you know the Lord, you know that He's present in your life and you know that He knows and hears your, your prayers. Boy, David who was a man after God's own heart. David could say in 1 Samuel 17, 37, The Lord that delivered me out of the lion and the bear, He will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. Think of the confidence he had. Boy, he had, he had confidence. But look at, go back to our text in verse 7. Now notice it, it shifts a little bit. First, uh, verse 5 and 6 is a personal uh, affirmation saying, God is on my side. I know the Lord will be there and is there with me and is going to help me. But notice what verse 7 says. It says, the Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Now, what are you, what are you saying there is, I, don't, I can't fight these battles alone. He said, I need people by my side. And so we, we, find, in, um, we find in 1 Samuel chapter 22 that he, he gathered men. Men came to him and were attracted to him. And so... Uh, in fact, 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2 says, And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them, and was there with him about 400 men. Look, let's see how that connects with 
the verse I just read. The Lord taketh, apart, taketh my part with them that help me. We need each other, don't we? You can't fight your battles alone either. And that's why God placed us within the, uh, a family, a church family, uh, a place where we can encourage one another, a place where we can help one another, a place where we can be there for one another. And I just want to tell you, in 2019, you need your church. You really need your church. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, and if he, he, he shows in that verse that he wants us to work together, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and three, four, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Matthew 18.20, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am also. God works in numbers. God works in groups. God works with his people and, and someone has said, if you want to know which way to go, find out where God is going. And find out the people that God is working in. And find out who God is working through. And join them. Well, that's what we, we have to do. And that's why we should trust in the Lord. But as we go into verse 8 we find out why it is better to trust in the Lord than in man. Let's talk about that for a little bit. You know, man is untrustworthy for many, many reasons. And we, we will all just acknowledge that. Not that we're saying, I, I can't trust a soul, but it, the fact is, as we look at ourselves Man is, think about this, man is weak. You take the strongest man that probably lived was Samson. But think how weak he was. He had a weakness that uh, all his physical strength could not, could not help him. That physical strength could not help him against the weakness of the flesh. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you that we're all very, very weak. Not only that, man is selfish. You know, we, we all tend to look out for number one, don't we? We think of our own interest and desires. Actually, from infancy, it is me, me, me. And uh, so, by the time, sometimes by the time you're an adult, become an adult, you become a little bit cynical about people, don't you? Why? Because man is basically selfish. And so, uh, the only hope that you have is finding someone who is consistently honest and, and you can trust them. And uh, sometimes that's hard to find. We're weak. We tend to be selfish. But we're also limited as to what we can do. You know, you know there's, uh, there's something that money and power cannot buy. You know, even when it comes to helping others, there's a limitation as to what we can do. The reality is we can't reach down to the innermost part of that person and help that person. In time of loss, you know, you want to you wanna comfort, but truly only God can do that. We're limited as to exactly what we can do. We find people in bondage to sin and you look at them and you want to help them. And we've all had perhaps loved ones that maybe had addictions or other problems and you wanted to help them but 
you're, you're helpless. Now, let's talk about why God is trustworthy. Amen? We'd get kind of discouraged if we thought, talked about man too long, wouldn't we? Sure, he's weak, he's selfish, he's limited. But think about God. We know that God is omnipotent, meaning he's all-powerful. He's able to do, the Bible says, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. If that be the case, then why don't we turn to God more often? Why don't we come to Him with our biggest problems? Why don't we come to Him when our, uh, in our time of our greatest need? Why? Because after all, God can do anything. Jesus said, all power or all authority, but all power is given unto me both in heaven and earth. If he has all power, then Jesus can do anything. And certainly he demonstrated that in his miracles, didn't he? He demonstrated that he could do all things. He calmed the storms. He cast out the demons. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And, and we, we are yet to test him like we should. We're yet to prove him for, what he, for who he is. We, we tend to pray our little prayers so limited and so uh, surrounded by our own thoughts about who God is, but we fail to see him as the great God. The great God, the almighty God, the one who's able to do all things. But God is the, and I'm, you know, we talk about man being selfish. God is the essence of goodness. And I want you to look at these first four verses of Psalm 118. Look at what he says. Verse 1, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. Verse 2, Let Israel now say that His, say it with me, mercy endureth forever. Verse 3, Let the house of Aaron now say that His, look at verse 4, let them now that fear the Lord say that. <laughs> now, the word mercy really means loving kindness. Loving kindness. God, we, we say God is good and He is. Nothing, you know, very often we can be kind to one another. But don't you cross me. Because you do, I might not be so kind. Isn't that the way we are? We tend to say, I'm kind as long as you're kind to me. What does it say about the kindness of the Lord? It endures forever, doesn't it? His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. In other words, nothing can stop or hinder His goodness, His kindness, His loving kindness. But you know, God's power is unlimited. Man's power is limited. There is, there's just so much that we can do. God's power is unlimited. Of course, we're all familiar with Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 
But I like 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye ha always having all sufficiency in everything may abound unto every good work. I like that verse. Great verse. See, there's nothing that God can't do, and there's nothing that God can't enable you to do as well. Whatever your situation, whatever your problem, God is able to make His grace abound towards you. All sufficient grace. So we see why it's better to trust in the Lord than to trust in man. But I want to take this a step further. And as we go into the rest of this psalm, we're going to see something uh, about the name of the Lord. Look at, look at verse, uh, verse 10. Verse 10 says, All nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord... Will I destroy them? Verse 11. They compass me about. Yea, they compass me about. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Look at verse 12. They compass me about like bees. They're quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will bless them. Now, uh, we'll look down at verse 26 where it says, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Now, so we ask the question, what is so special about the name of the Lord? How can we uh, personally apply that name to our own lives? Well, Actually, the word Lord in, in the Old Testament, every time it's in capital letters, it means Jehovah. It's speaking of Jehovah. Well, who is Jehovah? Well, we go back to uh, Exodus chapter 3, and you're, you're familiar with that, I'm sure. But we go back, and Moses is there at the burning bush, and... Um, and in uh, Exodus 3, 14, he says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Well, in verse 13, he says, What is your name? What is your name? And he says, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent you. So who is the I am? Uh, so, uh, that's what the word Jehovah means. It means I am the I am. And by the way, Jesus claimed that title as well. He said, I am. He says, I am the bread of life. I am uh, the water of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am, I am. You know, basically what that it means is God is eternal and God does not change. In fact, we go over to Numbers in, uh, in Numbers 23 and uh, Moses there tells us about this God who does not change. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. And the word repent there just simply means he doesn't change his mind. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? In other words, did God make a promise that he wouldn't keep? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? He doesn't change. Now, as you go through the new year, keep in mind that we're serving an unchanging God. 
keep in mind that we're serving an ever-present God, one who is always with us. By the way, there are many promises that are connected with the name Jehovah. Genesis 22, Jehovah Jireh, God provides or God sees. Jehovah Rapha, God heals. There's others, God our banner, God our righteousness. And God does not change. There's something special about that name. There's something very special about that name. And I believe the Jehovah of the Old Testament is the, uh, is the Lord Jesus in the New Testament. In fact, Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name uh, under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Only one name. Only one name. The name of the Lord Jesus. The truth is that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess at the name of Jesus. You might reject him in this life, but uh, there will be a time when all of mankind will have to bow their knee to the Lord Jesus. There's something special about that name. I told you the two stories at the beginning of this message. And the one father had taught his son that he could trust him with all of his being. The second son wanted his son not to trust anyone. I want to tell you, you can trust in God. You can believe God. You can know that he'll keep his promises. You can know that what he says he will do. And you can, you can rely upon him. And I'm telling you that as we uh, go into the new year, that's the greatest thing that you can do. Say, I will trust the Lord. Now, I'm assuming that everybody here professes to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and I, I hope you do, because that's the most important thing that you can do. Life is so uncertain. And the only certain thing in the world is knowing Jesus and loving Him and serving Him. Let's stand with our heads bowed, our eyes closed. And this morning, I want to encourage you to make that your, you might say your motto for the coming year. I will, I will trust in the Lord. My trust, my faith will be in God. I'm trusting Him, and I'm trusting Him for every need that we have. Maybe there's a spiritual need that someone has this morning, and if there is, I don't want us to leave without you being able to uh, speak to us. I don't know what your needs are today, but I, th I want us to just quietly and in our own hearts say, God, I do surrender my all to you. I do yield my all to you. I want your will to be done in my life. I am trusting you for everything that I might face. And I can tell you, I can tell you, that God's grace is sufficient. And God will strengthen you and help you for whatever you might face in the coming year. 
But I want to also tell you that we'll be here for you. And any way that we can be of help to you, we want to do it. So please realize that your church family is close by. And your church family is as close as, as just a, a message, a phone call, or a text message, or whatever. But make sure that you, uh, you don't go away bearing burdens alone. Because God has g- given you, again, your church family to help you and to be with you. Let me just mention this before we're dismissed, that there will be a New Year's Eve celebration here tomorrow night, and uh, if you want to come by, I think, did somebody give the time, 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and you can stay as long as you want to stay, but there'll be uh, food and fellowship, and so... I just mentioned that, Um, and so uh, just keep that in mind if if you're able to come out.